Well, good morning, everyone. We're going to continue in our studies about the preservation of the scriptures, and we've been comparing the Greek text that was corrupted sometime around the second or third century. Uh, we've, we've seen how in Alexandria, Egypt, there was a, a man by the name of Origen, and that he was largely responsible for the corruptions of the Greek text that has made its way uh, Constantine had Eusebius take Origen's Greek text and make 50 copies on animal skins and of those 50 copies made by Constantine to unite the Roman Empire by uniting paganism and Christianity uh, through the text that Origen had, the corrupted Greek text, uh, two of those have survived through time. One, the, the text from the Vatican and the other the text from Sinai. And so there are three of those uh, believed to be the same, man, the same time period that, that Eusebius made them for Constantine that have survived. And because they're on animal skins, they have survived because the other uh, copies of the manuscripts of Greek, of the true Greek text that is, was used for the translation of the King James Bible, uh, they were all manuscripts that were p copied on papri, which was a um, plant form of paper, ground up and made into paper, papyrus. And of course that paper in the Mediterranean area where the Bible's from would have been, uh, would have deteriorated. And of course it was used and copied out, so unlike the manuscripts they found in the Vatican and, and on, on Sinai, those manuscripts were not being used. Those manuscripts hadn't been used for a long, long time. They were just on a shelf being preserved. So the, the difference is uh, the uh, manuscripts that the was used, the Greek manuscripts, there were about 5,000 uh, fragments and copies of manuscripts that were used by the King James Committee when the King James Bible was, um, was edited, if you will, because it it didn't begin. All the translating from Greek and Hebrew into English didn't begin with the King James translators. They took uh, the Bibles that William Tyndale was large, largely responsible for the translation of, of the uh, English Bible um, from the Greek. And 90% of the scriptures that the King James translators edited were already translated by Tyndale, William Tyndale, uh, over a hundred years before. And so anyway, we've, we've looked at the fact that the Greek text that's under all the other modern translations is that same Greek text that the Catholic Church has used for their Latin Vulgate and other Bibles up through the centuries until today. And yet the Protestant, the Reformation, the Reformers all were uh, held the text that's under the King James Bible. So we're talking about, we have talked about um, there are 30 verses that were uh, deleted out of the Greek text that all the translations come from except the King James. And of those 30 verses, we've, we've looked at many of them. Uh, and here's one we're going to look at this morning, Mark chapter 15, verse 28. Um, we're going to look at just two this morning. Then we're going to look at some verses, changes that were done, other than these entire verses blatantly cut out of uh, those Bibles. And again, it's not in those translations because they believe that those early uh, corrupted Greek manuscripts are more reliable since they date back so old. And, but they reject the majority of Greek manuscripts uh, that are under the King James Greek text. Okay, so uh, here in Mark chapter 15 and verse uh, uh, 28, that entire verse is missing out of the NIV. Uh, their, their Bible reads verse 27, then it just reads verse 29. The entire verse is missing, verse 28. Now, if you look at the context, it's, uh, you, you know, it's the crucifixion of the Lord, and pretty important passage uh, in verse 25, and it was the third hour, and they, and they crucified him. And the superscription of his accusation was written over uh, the king of the Jews. And verse 27, and with him they crucify two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture 
was fulfilled which saith and he was numbered with the transgressors and they that passed by railed on him verse 29 wagging their heads and saying ah thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days save thyself and come down from the cross so what the way the Greek text that was translated by the King James translating committee it doesn't have verse 28 in it so they left it out too and so their Bible reads, And with him they crucified two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left, and they that passed by railed on him. So it just misses, they totally leave out the verse that wasn't in the Greek text that they think is more reliable that said, And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. Now, the, in defense of the fact that it's left out of their corrupted Greek text, they say that was added as commentary by one of the copyists who was copying out the scriptures. Well, for one, the regard that these men had with the word of God that were doing the copying out of the scriptures, they wouldn't inject any of their own personal statements or beliefs into the scripture. They had a great reverence for the word of God to leave it as it was. And as we know, there are warnings in the Bible that warn against adding to the scriptures or taking verses or words away from it. Uh, so the, the attitude of a believer toward the word of God would not have been one which they, they just flippantly added uh, an explanation right there in the middle of the text of the Bible. So, you know, that's just ridiculous. And, and so that's all you can do to try to defend a obvious corruption of a manuscript that you want to believe is more reliable because it's old, because it was preserved on animal skins. Uh, so um, that's one verse they leave out. Uh, Acts chapter 8, 37 is completely gone out of the Greek text uh, that's under the... NIV and all the other translations into English except the King, King James. Even the New King James, uh, the, the editors that, that copied out, the, made the New King James Bible, they believed the same thing about the Bible or the Greek text as the ones that did the work on the NIV and they, in that they don't believe that the Greek text under the King James is the right Greek text. So they reject uh, the true Greek text as well, the New King James Bible. But here in, um, if you're in Acts chapter 8, uh, look at verse 37. Again, I have an e NIV at home, uh, and I've checked these references, and in the, in the NIV, uh, it just skips verse 37 entirely. Uh, and if you read it, um, it's the one that's talking about the Ethiopian eunuch and in verse 36 in the King James, and as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, here's the verse that's missing out of the NIV. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then they're... they're Bible leaves out 37 and, and just joins 36 to verse 38 when it says, And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. Now, if you take out verse 37, you take out the kingdom gospel message. This is what, verse 37 is what they believe to be saved. Water baptism was included in the kingdom program. It was something that, uh, that they uh, recognized along with baptism. But when the Ethiopian eunuch asked Philip if he could be baptized, Philip said, you can be if you've believed in all your heart and that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. So that's the issue. Salvation was for them, uh, you remember from uh, Matthew chapter um, 16, uh, when, when the Lord said, who do you say I am to the disciples? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, on this rock will I build my church. That's the gospel message of the kingdom. So the uh, corrupted text takes out the gospel message, believing that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God. The Christ is Messiah. Uh, it's the anointed one is the word for Christ. So they believe that 
you know, they had to believe that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God, to be saved, and baptism was a part of their program, no doubt. So, that's a pretty important verse to just cut out of the Bible, is my point. Uh, and in here, in this context, it's the gospel message. And Philip was being careful that he didn't just baptize someone who didn't believe in the message of the gospel. So, these, those are the last two examples we're going to go over of entire verses missing. But as we said, there are 30,000 differences between the Greek text and the text under the King James Bible. 30,000 words that are different. Uh, theirs is called the minority text because there's only 300 manuscripts under the corrupt, that, that match the corrupted Greek reading. But there are 5,000 manuscripts under the true Greek text reading under the King James Bible. Now it's also called the majority uh, because of the 5,000, but it's the fuller. Fuller meaning there's more. It's 30,000 more words in the Greek text under the King James Bible than the ones under all the other translations. That's a lot of words. Um, especially when the Lord said, not one jot or one tittle, not one part of a letter will be missing until all things are fulfilled. Well, 30,000 words is a lot of jots and tittles. So one of them is the Word of God and one isn't, right? So you have to look for the Bible that has all the verses in it if you want to find the Bible that God has preserved for you today. Um, in the NIV, turn to 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 19. So what we're looking for is credibility. We know 30,000 words missing is a pretty good indicator which one is the, the correct Bible for us to have today. But... To look further, let's look at the credibility of the corrupted Greek text. And uh, so one example of that uh, lack of credibility is 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 19. And before we read this passage, I want to ask you, who in the Bible, just from your reference, who in the Bible was it that killed Goliath? Who killed the Goliath? David. David killed the Goliath, right? Well, let's, let's read um, 2 Samuel 21, verse 19. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan, the son of Jeroragim, a Bethlehemite, Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Who did this guy kill? He killed the brother of Goliath, right? Well, if you read the NIV, uh, it says, Elihan, son of Jeroragim, the Bethlehemite, killed Goliath, the Gittite, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. That's what the NIV reads. So who did... Who killed Goliath? Not David, according to the NIV. Well, I'm sure if you went back and read the account where David kills Goliath, it'd be right there. But in this passage where it's talking about a guy who killed Goliath's brother, they changed that to say that this guy killed Goliath. So that's a mistake. You can do all you want to try to explain why it's that way, uh, but uh, you, know, you have to consider the fact that this Bible has a major mistake in it when it says that this man killed Goliath instead of Goliath's brother. So changing those 30,000 changes, those changes are, are important changes that, that are made. Uh, and let me see if I can find the reference real quick. In Titus chapter 1, uh, verse 2, it says, God that cannot lie. Well, you want a Bible that doesn't have mistakes in it. You want a Bible that doesn't say, this other man killed Goliath. You want the Bible that says, he killed Goliath's brother. The correct account of what happened uh, in that context. Um, so, how can God that cannot lie be the one, how can his word say that this other guy killed Goliath? God's word won't say that. God's word is perfect. Uh, 
there is someone who God's word calls a liar, and, and uh, Jesus Christ calls him the liar, uh, this person, a li uh, Satan the liar, and the father of lies. So we know that it's Satan fathered those kind of changes that make the statements that are lies in the Bible, that are incorrect, that are mistakes. Uh, look at um, Luke chapter 9, verse 55 now. So that's just one example. We're going to look at a few more. That even a child in Sunday school knows who killed Goliath. And so why wouldn't they correct that before they published thousands of copies of it? You know, why would they change that to not say Goliath's brother? Even though the text they were using might, might have had an error in it, I don't know what the manuscript evidence was for them saying uh, that this man killed Goliath and not David. Uh, compare Luke 9, verse 55. But if you read that and, and you're just reading the Bible, wouldn't you be confused? You know, if, that's, if you're reading the Bible because it's easier to understand, that translation because it's easier to understand, and you've already read that David killed Goliath, and this is much later, and then you read this man killed Goliath, wouldn't that make you doubt that text that you're reading, whether it is more reliable and authoritative than it is the Word of God? Look at uh, Luke 9 now, verse 55. And he turned and rebuked him and said... Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. Verse 56 says, For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Now, um, in the NIV, uh, it leaves out that the Son of Man is come to save men's lives. And leaves that out. That's a deletion. That sentence, for the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And in the NIV it just reads, and they went into another village. So the NIV just reads, verse 55, and he turned and rebuked them and said, you know not what manner of spirit ye are of. And verse 56 in the NIV reads, and they went to another village. Um, so, you know, why would the NIV leave out, for the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them? Why would that be left out? Why would the corruptors of the Bible, of the Greek text that became the corrupt text that men are saying today is more reliable than the Greek text under the true Bible, the King James, why would they, those corruptors, want that verse out? Well, that verse implies that Christ came into the world to save sinners. That he pre-existed and came into the world. And remember that those that were Gnostics that were responsible for this corrupt, the corruptions in the Greek text under all these translations, they didn't believe that Jesus Christ was God incarnate. Those men didn't. And so they changed parts of the Bible that attacked the deity of Christ. And we'll talk about that a little more later. So the NIV, just picking on the translation now, that translation, we know there are 30,000 differences between the Greek text that was used to translate the NIV and the Greek text under the King James Bible, but there are 64,000 fewer words in the NIV than the KJB. So they just took it upon themselves to take another 34,000 out, okay, to make it read easier. You know what? We don't need those 34,000 words. You know, God just was spoke too much. We need to make his word shorter and simpler. And it's the 613 red letter words in the NIV are, are missing. So, you know, a lot of people look to those red letter words as being, that's Jesus actually speaking. Now, we know that God spoke all of the words. And that's our attitude toward the Bible. My Bible doesn't have red letters because I didn't want them in it because I didn't want to make a distinction between the things that Christ spoke while he was here and the things that he spoke through all the prophets and all the other writers of the Bible. But if that's important to you, then you have 613 less red letter words in your NIV because they're shorter in the Greek text that they were translated from. 
Um, in Matthew 1.25, uh, as far as mistakes in the Bible or blatant indicators of why their Bible is shorter than the text of the King James. Here's an example, Matthew chapter 1, verse 25. Uh, verse 24, And Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not until she had brought forth her, what? In the King James, her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Now, did Jesus, uh, okay, did Joseph and Mary have children together after the Lord was born? We know they did because we have verses that say that uh, Mary came to visit Jesus with his brethren. And, and there are several verses that talk about uh, Jesus having stepbrothers and sisters, basically. Different daddies, but same mother, right? Well, in the NIV, that verse says, they, the NIV leaves out firstborn in verse 25. So if you read it in the NIV, it, it essentially say, he knew her, Joseph knew Mary not until she brought forth her, her son and called his name Jesus. So that would imply immaculate conception. That would not imply that he had other brothers and sisters. Um, that wouldn't emphasize the, the difference between the Lord being the firstborn, uh, differentiating him from the other brothers and sisters that had, a, had Joseph as their father. Uh, so it's just another attack on the deity of Christ. Um, Matthew, uh, verse, Matthew chapter 5, verse 22 is, kind of, is very important. You don't want a Bible that makes the Lord a sinner. Okay? And all the other Bibles change this verse, making Jesus a sinner. Uh, whereas the true reading makes it clear that he wasn't sinning. Uh, so here we are in, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 22. Um, verse 21, Ye have heard that it was said of them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother, notice the next three words in the King James, without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother Reka shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. So it's clear in verse 22 in the Greek text under the King James that being angry with a justifiable cause is not a sin. And the Lord makes that clear here. He who is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. So the NIV just leaves out without a cause. And look at uh, Mark 3 verse 5. Mark 3 5. And when he had, uh, okay, and this is uh, verse 1. Uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Let's get the context. And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand, and they watched him whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might what? Accuse him, right? So these are these high priests, these religious leaders in Israel that are constantly trying to accuse the Lord of being a sinner or of uh, being... Um, unrighteous or doing something wrong. So here they're trying to accuse him uh, because they wanted to see if he tried to heal somebody on the Sabbath day and that would be wrong in their eyes, right? Verse 3, And he said unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth, and he saith unto him, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil? To save life or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked round about them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole uh, as the other. Now, does the law say don't heal on the Sabbath? No. No. I mean, that would, be, uh, that would say God can't do something on the Sabbath, wouldn't it? I mean, what he was, he's God. He, he was the one that gave the law from Sinai. 
to, to Moses, the Lord Jesus Christ, the third person, or the second person of the Godhead. But here in this verse, you can see that he was angry, but was it justifiable? Yes, he had good reason to be angry. Was it a sin? Well, the thing is, of course it's not a sin, but if you take angry out or without a cause out, I'm sorry, be angry without a cause, if you take without a cause out of Matthew 5.22, you do have verses where Christ was angry, like with the money changers to overturning those tables. He was angry that they were conducting uh, uh, false trade in the temple with the uh, exchanging the money for the sacrifices. And so uh, the Lord was angry with the cause in a couple places. And if you take that out of the Bible um, without a cause, out of your NIV and all the other versions, then you are making the Lord out to be a sinner by his own testimony in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 22. So those things are important. Now, in the... Greek text under the, uh, under the NIV and all the other modern translations, the word Lord is removed 35 times. 35 times the Lord is out. Jesus is stricken from their text, Greek text, 34 times. And Christ is out 44 times. For a total of 115 times the name of Christ is shortened in those Bibles. In Matthew chapter 9, 13, uh, the sentence, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners, is deleted. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, let's read Matthew 9, 13. To repentance is what's stricken in that passage. And for time's sake, we're not going to go there. Uh, just take my word for it. Look it up in your Bible and see if repentance is removed if you have one of the other translations. Mark uh, chapter 1 verse 2 is an important passage. If you go into a bookstore and in Mark chapter 1 verse 2, if you're wanting to buy a Bible, you want to make sure it doesn't have mistakes. And here's an example of, a, of, a, of an error. If I can get there. In Mark 1 verse 2. Very important mistake made here. In the King James, verse 2 reads, As, okay, we have to read verse 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verse 3, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Okay, so there's actually... This is a, uh, quoting two passages, verses 2 and 3. Uh, and in the NIV, instead of saying, as it is written in the prophets, implying more than one in verse 2, there's, the NIV reads, in Isaiah the prophet. That's important because if you look in the, your margin, that's a quote of Malachi 3.1. And Isaiah 40, verse 3. So you can't say in Isaiah because verse 3 is not a quote out of Isaiah. It's out of Malachi. So you have a mistake uh, in that statement that it's written in the prophet Isaiah in all the versions other than the King James. That's an error that you can point out to anyone if you'd like to show them the differences in their Bible. Uh, Luke chapter 4 verse 4 is kind of indicative of what's going on. And Jesus answered him saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And in the NIV, but by every word of God is missing, is deleted. Man shall not live by bread alone. Stops there in the NIV. Why would they want to take out man shall not live by bread alone? What do you need to live according to the Lord? Every word of God. You need those 30,000 changes that were made, all those words taken out to make it shorter. You need those 30,000. You need those 30 verses that were removed to have every word of God. 
So I hope you'll consider those things and thank you for uh, listening to this message.